I gotta be honest, it's uh, still cold as hell in here. Um, this is technically part two. We're at the point of we need to get to the carb. And I'm gonna see about saving the air box for just a minute here. I'm also curious what jets are in there. Um, and it looks like the insulator. Uh, the insulator is the rubber piece between the carb and the manifold, basically the engine. Normally there would be screws here on these two. I would probably leave this attached. If it comes off the carb and the manifold, um, it's kind of hard to get it back on. It's really a, a stiff rubber. Um, so it's nice if you can keep it clamped on here and just pull the carb off. Yeah, let's clear some of this out. Let's get this get this taken off. I'm gonna take a flathead. I'm gonna try to pry it gently. You really don't want to tear it, especially if you're gonna keep it. Undoing the box would probably help a little, but you can see I can get it get it off of there just fine. Uh, if I can get it, push it out of the way. That's a pain in the ass. I can push it out of the way a little bit. It's awfully tight on my mitt. Let me see if I can get some of these plugs out. We've got the, um, oh, it's the enrichment valve, but a lot of people call it the, uh, the choke. Um, in a weird way, it kind of does the opposite. So, all right. So those plugs are off. The uh, nuts on the throttle cable are actually pretty loose. Get that off here. Man, that air box is just, just annoying. Let's just, um, I'm gonna make one more attempt. All right. All right, we're gonna pull the air box off. It's just, I'm sure that there's a way to do it, but when it's cold and your fingers start hurting, um, this is just a pain in the ass. So let's let's pull the air box off. We've got a bolt here to uh, the rear fender, bolt here. This one's the mystery though. This one over here, uh, oh, that's just part of this. Okay, we don't have to worry about that. Then let's just pull that and that. has got a little, uh, I'm not sure if you can see it from your angle, but there's a little clamp to hold this hose over there. Um, a few hoses on here. Uh, just for reference uh, later, in case I want to put this back together. This hose right here um, at about like the uh, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock position, that goes to uh, the top of the valve cover, okay? Uh, this hose at the noon position goes to the top of the car uh, for uh, the reference. That little hose, previous to 06, you will have on the manifold, there is a, an air hookup. It's actually unhooked. It's like a PVC system for the older bikes. Um, they they changed the way it was done and I, I feel like it's not exactly the same thing but it serves a similar purpose and then always when you want a hose to come off plastic or metal if you grip it gingerly uh with uh, pliers and then turn it you'll actually hear it sort of crack and then you know it's loose enough to slide off and it'll help a lot all right so that well, I didn't need to pull it off there because it came off of there. That we might save. I'll set that over there. A lot of this rubber is really close to being trash, honestly. Um, and then, this last hose that I'm fighting is probably going to... Uh, the par pair system, which is 
uh, not the front of the bike, but like this right here, there's a little inlet. That's supposed to be the thing that it, it, it adds air into the exhaust for some reason. And I keep reading the reason and I keep forgetting. So, okay. So here we go. And we will pretend that we are going to do something with that. Let me get some of these hoses out of here. Oh, I wish I could get to that par easy. Here it is. We're going to want to seal that up. Okay, otherwise it will lean out everything as well. So I'll probably um, just fold it over for now and zip tie it. And that will be a temporary solution. Um, later on down the road, we can get a block off plate for it or fashion a fancy, you know, just a hose from spare parts or whatever with a cap in it. So that, that gets blocked off. This we just send to ground. Um, so anything that comes out of it just leaks on the ground. Um, that does not need to be filtered. Uh, the side of the carb on top, that reference point, very few people will filter that. Um, it really doesn't suck. There's just a diaphragm in the carb. One, so one side of that diaphragm needs to see how hard the engine's sucking, and then the other side just sees, you know, regular air. And it's that balance that helps adjust the needle perfectly to determine exactly how much gas is coming in. If you put your finger on it, it will shut it down because then the needle can't move properly. But I've never seen anything get sucked into it. We are pretty clear now on the carb, I think. So from here, we would normally have screws through there and then we'd have a little tube that would keep those from from going too far, okay? And then a square nut on back. Um, so when you do loosen those, you would like to put your finger on the back of that and only unscrew it to the point where it's loose, but you don't lose that nut, okay? Um, also, let me just remind you, um, if you do not have the right tool, at least use a number two Phillips although the right tool is actually a JIS. It's a Japanese industry standard screwdriver. You still have to be really careful with it. If you use anything else, you're just gonna strip pretty much every screw you try to touch, okay? Especially when the bike is older like this and been in the weather a little. That is hooked to ground, so I can't push it entirely out of the way. Let me finish getting these nuts off the throttle cable. All right, and pull that off. All right, so we'll set the throttle cable to the side. There's coolant lines on both sides in the front of the carb. All right, they are, they're basically so that in the winter, once the bike gets warm, coolant, like it doesn't go into the carb, but it basically goes into a tube that's touching the carb. And that will keep your carb warm and actually help it run properly because if your carb is cold, the fuel won't atomize very well. So on the back right of the carb, we've got the fuel line, okay? So that's already, it doesn't have a uh, clamp on it. Not too big of a deal, we'll pull that off. All right, it, these may leak a little bit, but they're not gonna like pour a ton of it, so don't worry about it too much. There's one of the coolant lines. And I think I can pop this off now. Hopefully the insulator doesn't come off with it. And there we go. And the carb is out. Here's the carb from the Met 2. Um, I have another carb here as well. There shouldn't be many differences. Obviously the bowl is not on this one. I could pull out a 75 main jet if I wanted. Um, I'm gonna look yeah, I, I think that's what I want to do, but I'd like to get a find a see if I have a thirty eight uh, for the for the sl the slow jet, um, and then we can put uh, put a different intake on there because I'm not 
I'm not thrilled about putting that air box back on. I think we're past the point of no return as far as like my motivation for redoing the air box. I, what I'd really prefer is uh, a 38 and a 78, 38 and 75 even. Um, let's see what's in this car. All right. Hey, there's a 75. Okay, so, and it looks pretty good. Okay. If you feel like you're forcing it, you're probably doing it wrong. So, yeah. Hand tight, pretty good. I'll come back with a screwdriver, just eh. But, like, really, don't jam on it. The brass will just tear right up. Um, <clears throat> we still need to pull this small jet. Okay. And let's cross our fingers that it's size we want. Ooh, it's a 38. Awesome. Okay. We're good. We're good. 3875 is a great starting point for a DIY intake if you do a short one, okay? Put that back in there. Don't tighten it down too much. You really don't. Let's see if this one's a little bit better. I have really nice screwdrivers somewhere, but I'm kind of messy sometimes. Oh, that's nice. Okay. There. So we're not going to make any super desperate attempt to clean any of the small passages or anything like that. Um, I think we're pretty much good. This card really doesn't look dirty. Jets are clean that we put in there. Uh, yeah. Uh, then we will take the card bowl. Like I said, there doesn't seem like there's any junk in there. So that's a good sign. Get that back on. And we will take these screws back on. All right. So it looks good. Uh, yeah, I think we can put this back on the bike. Um, and we might even be able to kick it because uh, I think the battery will not go. Uh, we just got to figure out a gas tank situation. Um, we're building a intake. Um, it's typically like a short intake, uh, especially for the 3875 setup in here. Um, something about this long is going to work. Um, we are going to, we'll just go ahead and go with this one. All right, that's pretty good. Um, and then we'll have to open that up slightly. So we're good. Uh, we're Jed 3875 on a short intake. Great. We'll try, a, well, later on, we'll probably try 78. That might even work a little bit better with this. You know what, while we got this carb off too, Let's pull the fender because that's going to flop around like crazy. Alright. Just out that way. Alright. 2003. Original rear fender. Honda Metropolitan 2. Very rare. Sell it on eBay. Let's, uh, let's get the car back on there. I'm going to bring you up close so you can see that. Um. Let's stick that back on later and put that in my carb parts. I'm just trying to get it running so we can diagnose it. There's the fuel line. We're not going to use the fuel line, actually. I have got some uh, other fuel line we're going to put on there, and then we're going to build a gravity tank for fuel. Uh, since my 
tank has uh, has rust in it. Um, the two coolant hoses are there. Um, I'm gonna do this one first. Uh, there's not a hose clamp on there now. There should be, but I've never seen it come off without it. So I'm not worried about it now. Uh, because the Met has so many plastics, when I finally button it up, I'll probably do some permanent solution here. I didn't realize that shock was right there. Might have to shorten my intake. That's just not gonna work, let's pull that off. Okay, so this is hitting the shock right there. I'm gonna try shortening that up or something so it doesn't hit the shock, maybe something with a more drastic turn. I found something that's a shorter or a quicker angle. Um, I might add that into it to get the right length. Let's see if that's gonna fit. And that will actually clear everything nicely. So let me get a hose clamp on there, we'll be right back. All right, it's not pretty, but it's gonna work great. Coolant line, that side. I think I'm gonna jam it on and then get the coolant in there. Get it in there. All right. Kind of wishing that hose clamp was on there now, but we're not probably gonna ride it like this. We're just gonna run the engine. All right. It's good. Pop that back in. Pop that in. Okay. This is, this hose right here is to, you can't see it, but it's to the manifolds, a reference, or it's, it operates the PCV valve. If I can pull that through. There's a hose clamp on the end of it that doesn't want to be pulled through. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kink that over and then zip tie that shut. Same thing with this pair valve. We'll kink that over, shut that. Let's get that fuel line because we're not using that fuel line. That fuel line feels like it's about dead anyway. Figure that out in a minute. Um, let's get the throttle cable back on. It is always fun. Get it in there, there's a little line. Okay, pull it around that cam. Pull it in there. When I'm putting the throttle ca cable back on, what I'll do is I'll pull it till it just barely wants to pull on this, okay? And I'll put that one down to that position. I don't want it to hold it open. I want it to be able to come back to the stop. Um, we can adjust it a little bit better later, but for the time being, that'll be good. And operates us just fine. And you can hear it click when it touches the stop. And that's actually your idle adjust. Uh, by turning that, it uh, pushes this cam, and that actually opens the butterfly that allows air and fuel through into the engine. That's still pretty loosey goosey, but I think we're gonna be all right. Let me see if I get some fuel to dump down this fuel line. Take another shot at this. We're all hooked back up. We don't have a gas tank. Uh, we have this going to the car, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these bowl, uh, these uh, bottles 
that has like a glue sort of end on it. Okay, so I was able to actually, the original thing that I popped off has a hole in the end of it and I was able to put that back on there. So just keep that locked on. It's pretty good on there. The only other thing we need to do, we need to delicately add a hole, like the gas, we're gonna put gas in here. The gas won't run out if air can't go in. Maybe with something a little bit sharper. Doesn't need to be, there we go, much, just enough to let air in. Now we're gonna fill that with gas. Covering that hole, squeezing a little bit. You can see it going down, filling the hose and the carb. So, find a place to set this. We're gonna have to kick it because we did not charge the battery. Um, This could be it, or we could be going to part two because I'm really stuck for time. So you can hear the uh, pump pumping. It's not really doing much. I mean, it's pumping gas out to nowhere, but fingers crossed, right? <laughs> 